Grand Rising, beautiful soul family. I'm Coach Susie, and welcome to the Beyond Abuse podcast. I have Fonda White Jr. with me today. Uh, Fonda White is a motivational speaker. He, he is the CEO and owner of uh, Rise to Strive. Um, and he's speaking about the importance of self-care for men, especially men who experience mental barriers because we we understand that a lot of men go into hiding um, regarding mental barriers and we want to let men know that it's it's okay it's okay to be you it's okay to admit that you don't have it all together because no one is expecting you to have it all together but in the same token, you got to be able to take care of yourself, right? So without further ado, thank you, Fonda, for agreeing to be here with me today. It's always a pleasure for you to join me um, on these conversations and to provide your expertise. And if I left out anything, you know, any of your accolades or anything like that, go ahead and share that with us before we get started. And then we'll jump right into it. So go ahead. Okay, yeah. Um... I'm actually, it's funny you say that because I'm actually starting uh, this new thing. It's called the, <clears throat> I think I believe I mentioned to you before, but it's called the Mind Me Project, M-I-N-D Project. Mm. And it uh, stands for My Illness Never Defines Me. I love so, that. Wow. So I'm, I'm, tr I'm trying to work on that more and more, kind of implement that with uh, yeah. everything I'm doing. So, But other than that, you did a great job, though. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yes, because... I think that a lot of us, including me, for, for many years, and you probably have too, for many years, we I allowed that, that, that mental barrier to define me, to kind of uh, hide who you are because of fear of judgment. But it mental our mental barriers are only one little piece of the beautiful puzzle that we are. We're this huge puzzle that has all right, these right. different pieces and mental yeah. health is just a small portion of that. And we we allow that little one little piece to be the whole puzzle. And that's not true. Right. Right. Yeah, that's that's exactly exactly right. What I learned yesterday is funny. Um, me having schizoaffect disorder, which mm -hmm. is schizophrenia and bipolar together. Mm -hmm. um, I realized that uh, before who I was, you know, we always put these these expectations on ourselves or, or expectations on people, mm -hmm. you know, like at, we, we kind of put them at a high standard and put, plus we put ourselves at a high standard. But what I learned with <clears throat> my disorder is that it's okay to have, you know, the mental barriers or the mental illness or mental disorder I have, but that doesn't mean like it's, it, it is who I am at, at the core, right. you know what I mean? So yeah, I, I just kind of, kind of learned that process, mm -hmm. you know, just ex like I've been accepting it. Mm -hmm. but just more so accepting my own illness and what I can and cannot do with right. it, you know, but at the same time, like, no, it, it doesn't define who Fonda White is. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. It, it doesn't define who you are at all. It's a part of, that's something that happened in your life. You know, like it's, it's something that was, was a result of whatever it is that you experienced in life. Mm -hmm. And that's what it is, you know, and I, somebody told me the other day that they don't even call it a disorder or a right. um, illness, they call it a condition. It's right. a condition, yep. Yep. you know, like it doesn't make us, you know, it, it doesn't define us. And I think so many of us define, allow it to define us. And that's why we, we right. stop, we hesitate. We don't live the life that we're truly meant to live because we think, oh my goodness, here I am again, having another episode or, you know, whatever it is. And it's, you have to really be compassionate with yourself and know that that's just like you said, it's only a little small portion. It's, it yep. doesn't define you, you know, and you got to be okay with that. So as someone who experiences um, your condition, uh, condition, tell us how, how you take day by day or what does a routine look like for you as a person with a mental condition? Right, you know, and and having the mental condition, it, there are days where it's harder, mm -hmm. and then there's days where it's it's okay, you know. So just want to put that out there. It's okay to have those days, mm -hmm. but um, for my routine, <clears throat> I usually just kind of kind of look within. I always get up in the morning and say uh, a prayer and do my affirmations or whatnot. 
um, to keep myself centered, you know, and, you know, then I go, you know, into what I'm doing for the day, but I'm always reminding myself each and every day that, you know, uh, there's always a light at the end of the tunnel, like I mentioned before, you know, and, you know, things like my hobbies, like music is one of my hobbies and things that keep me kind of uh, created, you know, like, or creative, excuse me, because I'm, I'm a creative type. Right. You know, I love making videos and sometimes I put a funny video out or some type of music or whatnot, but just trying to find that, um, I guess that, what do you call it? Like that one, that thing that your gift, that one thing that you're gifted with that God has given you, you know, it's like embrace it. And I, I came to figure out that I'm a creative type, you know, and just being around creativity kind of keeps me centered and grounded in my routine. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I absolutely agree with that. And, um, and I think that the more that you create, the more gifts that you uncover, because like you right. said, you, you know, music, music is something that you love, but then you got, you know, the, the mind me, you know, right. that's a gift too. That's a gift yeah. too. you sharing your story and you coming up, like being creative is in a, in a you know, inventing things. You're an innovator, right. you know, and right. once you actually tap into that and create yourself this, this routine, because yes, we have to ask people who experience mental barriers, and, and, and depression or whatever it is you may go through, you have to have that, you have to have that routine. And right. you gotta kind of stick to it because when you don't stick to it, you know that it's like, oh, I see, like I didn't I didn't do what I was supposed to do this morning. Right. You know what I'm saying? You all off. Yes, it does. <laughs> it's like I, and I cannot forego that and that's very important. And that is a part of self care. Would you agree or not agree? Oh, I totally agree. Yes, mm -hmm. indeed. Yeah, that's definitely self care for you, and you gotta you gotta make yourself a priority, right? Right. That's you gotta. One priority. Yeah, you got you gotta make sure that you're sticking to that schedule, sticking to that routine. And do you find that when you actually stick to your routines, you you have more ideas, you have more creativity? Yes, I do actually. It's funny you say that because I know <clears throat> sometimes when I get off track. Like, and you know, having my mind, it can be everywhere, just everywhere mm -hmm. with ideas and everywhere. And I tell my girlfriend all the time that it's like, man, I got this idea. And she's like, okay, well, write it down or, you know, think about it. But um, when I am on my track to with what I'm doing and, and especially keeping the, the mission in, in front, mm -hmm. you know, uh, I think we talked about it before, but my mission is always to create hope back into people's lives in the mental community. Mm -hmm. That's my mission. So I try to keep that in the front of my mind and so if I do ever get off track a little bit, I, I try to steer back, you know, into my mm -hmm. mission, you know, yeah. so remembering the mission is a big part. Right. And I think it's very <laughs> imp important for you to have that support system. Um, yeah. I, don't, I don't know Joy, but she's been, you know, an amazing person to like connect with so far, yeah. you know, and it's just like, you need that support system, especially when, and you need somebody who understands understands it's, yes it's yes understanding is so important to know <laughs> that yeah sometimes i have all these these thoughts and i think that's important for you to write them down you know so right. that you can keep a track of them but mm -hmm. um tell us about like you know what else are you doing as far as like your music i know you got the mind me but what are some other things that you are doing to keep hope alive in the mental um, the mental illness community, if you, if you would. Yeah. Um, like I said, I got the Miami project. I'm still working on some ideas for that. Um, I'm still thinking I, I've wrote it, but, or I've written it, but I'm still kind of coming up with my book idea. Mm -hmm. Um, my music is, I'm, I'm still kind of going back and forth with, as far as like, if I actually want to pursue it or just kind of do it for my own mm -hmm. therapy myself. Mm -hmm. But, um, also, with in Rise and Strive, like I said, one day I want that to be a, a, a nonprofit organization for mental health community. So I have a lot of things going on, um, but I'm just trying to, like like Joy always tells me, kind of focus on one, mm -hmm. you know. And, and what I want to say <clears throat> is about self-care, and, and, and especially for men, you know, it's like when you have, like we just talked about, when you have that support mm -hmm. system or that support group around you, right you know, like my mother and, and my sister and, and my girlfriend, Joy, and it's like they kind of keep you kind of balanced mm -hmm. in, in a sense, you know, and mm -hmm. it's like, I think it's very important, not only for yourself, like, yes, self-love and self-care mm -hmm. is important, 
but having that group around you, that people, that energy around yeah. you to keep you, you know, sane. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know, so. I totally agree with that because, <clears throat> and especially men, like I said before, like I think a lot of men feel that they need to, you know, present this one front because right. they are afraid that uh, somebody won't understand that, but right. there is someone out there that will love you just as you are. The, the key yes. is being honest and upfront yeah. about your, your struggles or your conditions. And I think a lot of men try to hide from that. So if you were to, to speak to men, what is it that you would encourage them um, if they are struggling with a mental barrier? What, what is some, something that you would say to encourage them or to give them hope right. in that situation? Right. I would say the first thing is, is, is vulnerability. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, it's okay to open up. Mm -hmm. It's okay. There's, that doesn't make you less of a man or, you know, not manly in a sense. It's okay to open up, you know? Um, and what I'm learning, especially with this, the, the beautiful relationship I'm in with joy is like, you know, with, when we talk and we discuss things, you know, it's, it's definitely important for that person. It doesn't have to be a girlfriend or anything, just a friend or anything. Mm -hmm to want to understand your mental barrier. And that's the thing that um, me and Joy are learning as well together, you know, more on schizoaffective disorder. Like she'll watch videos and wow. kind of read about it mm -hmm. just to understand me yes. and, and help our relationship better, you know? So, you know, I would also tell the men, you know, to um, find something. I always tell people to find something that they love to do and express it. You know, it doesn't have to be music or writing. It can be building cars or anything mm -hmm. like that. Find something to do, keep your hands busy, mm -hmm. you know, keep it moving. And um, yeah, just just be vulnerable and find something that you love to do and, and open up. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's important, it's very important. Yes, I absolutely agree. Do you think that more men struggle with that concept of being perfect? I do, and, and, I, and I, I struggle myself, you know, like, Sometimes I think about like, you know, the money maker or the protector, the, mm -hmm. the guy that has to be, you know, this and <clears throat> yeah, I, I definitely do think we, it's embedded in us, mm -hmm. you know, as, as kids growing up, you know, and things, um, I didn't necessarily grow up as much with my father, mm -hmm. but, um, but just when my uncles and everything, when I was around, it's like, you know, you have to be that, mm -hmm. that tough guy, you know, mm -hmm. and I think it's just embedded us to, to do that, mm -hmm. but like I said, just, it's okay to let down the sword a little bit, mm, <laughs> you know, yeah. and, and open up, you know, because that's the only way, you know, that's the only way you can grow. Absolutely. You know, that's the only way you can grow is to let go. So. Oh, that's good. I like that. Let go. Because I think too, that so many men, just like you said, they, they feel that they have to be in control and they feel that they have to be the, the protector and the provider. Well, I, I think that we've, we, we have to be able to be that together, you know, like right. as a man, you deserve it just as much as she does, you know, mm -hmm. but, but then that goes back to, um, and, and not just like you said before, not just a romantic relationship in your friendships as well. You got to right. let that guard down. You, you got to be okay. And I, and I get it. A lot of us, most of us have been hurt in the past. Yeah. But like you said, you got to let it go because there are people out there that no matter what you go through, no matter your struggles, there's some people out there that will support you and, yeah. and seek to understand you, you know, but they can't do that without you expressing your needs, your vulnerabilities. And I think a lot of men have trouble with asking yeah. for help. Would you agree? Oh man, yes, I definitely agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. what would you what would you say to those men that um, are very prideful, I think, and don't want to don't want to ask for the help? What 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 would you what would you say to them? Well, I know I've, I've been one of those men. So <laughs> uh, for me, it was more like I would I would do things like like show my action to try to get help, you know, mm. like things like that, you know, like kind of look at somebody like I need help, but I wouldn't say it. Mm. But I think that if we can just start off small in increments of just like asking just for uh, some advice or mm. some, some more clarity or something like that, just like I said in the, in, in the beginning, just vulnerability and just kind of let it ease and let it go a little bit, you know, mm -hmm. because we, we as men, you know, <laughs> we have to, 
there there are certain times we have to be you know the 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 guy mm-hmm. but um you know once you have somebody that and, and like i said friend romantic partnership or whatever once you have somebody you can trust mm-hmm. you know that's a big thing it's like find somebody you can trust yeah. to talk to mm-hmm. and um open up you know yeah. it's okay yeah yeah so how did how did you how did you get to that state of being more vulnerable and sharing your emotions and sharing your struggles for me it was it was when i i'm i'm a type of person i don't like to let people down or i don't like to make mm-hmm. people feel bad mm-hmm. and honestly when i saw my my mom and sister and in in positions where they're crying you mm-hmm. know and they're just like they didn't know what to do mm-hmm. with with me when i was going through my dark times that that just morally helped, you know, made me feel a certain way. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, man, I need to stop trying to portray this. You know, I played football, college football and minor Mm -hmm. professional league football. And I was like, I need to stop trying to portray this, this guy with the armor Mm -hmm. because I'm hurting people, you know? And so I I just let piece by piece, it was Mm -hmm. like, I would let them know little things here and there. Mm -hmm. And then um, eventually now, now I can't stop talking about (laughs) (laughs) I think that's a good thing, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, because I agree, once you get to that point of um, stripping down that armor, and, 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 and I think a, a lot of men struggle with that is that, you know, because like you said, they, they are, they feel that they are supposed to be this, this manly man, you know, and, and I love the fact that you share because you have been, you know, uh, because people will look at you like, oh, He's been, you know, he's a football player. He he does all this stuff. So I think it's very important because a lot of those men struggle, you know, because yeah. they're they're expected to be this 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 statue, this person who who does not have any emotions. And I think more men need to see that that you have you have the feminine in you too. It's it's about balancing that and oh, yeah. and knowing that it's okay to share because. I don't know about you or where you come from, but I know in in our culture, it's not it's frowned upon, especially yeah. for men to share their emotions yeah. because exactly. they're seen as weak or you know not manly, and that's the opposite. I feel I feel right. that when you're yeah. able to, especially a man when he's able to be vulnerable and open and share his emotions, it actually it actually makes him more masculine yeah more of a man yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's like i saw that I, I heard this one thing that the i, I can't remember where I, I heard it from but it was saying about something about men who um show strength at times and then show they don't have it was something like they don't have to show their strength all the time mm. to to be a man mm. sometimes it's okay to 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 show your weakness and show that you're human yeah. You know what I mean? And I, I can't remember the exact quote, but it was something like that. And I was like, wow, that, that's kind of profound. You know? Absolutely. So, and I think and, a lot of men. Oh, go ahead. Oh, no, no. I was going to say, I'm sorry. Um, it's just you're right. And especially in our culture, you know, it's, it's you know, therapy or mm-hmm. um, other talking about your feelings or something. Because I know when I was younger, you know, when my dad was around at times he was around, it was like, boy, be quiet. Like, mm. you know, stop acting like so-and-so. Right. You know, so it was a. Uh, you're you're definitely right about that. You know, it's look for us, look frowned upon, but mm-hmm. um, it's a new it's a new day and age. Yes. You know, it's like it's okay to open up. Yes. It's okay, and it's okay to ask for help and to go yeah. and seek out the resources. And I think so many people, especially in our culture, because of the way that we were raised. You know, it's right. you're expected to be this perfect person. And I love that you said, "No, I'm human." You know, yeah. like I I have these difficulties that I struggle with. And really, I just need for you to understand, you know, that I'm not going to be this perfect person that, you know, I I have my difficulties too, but, you know, I'm at a place in my life now where I'm no longer projecting that. I know how to deal with it in in a healthy way now, you know, because I Mm -hmm. think before, like you said, when you were hurting other people, um, it was because of projection. It was because you were bottling up your emotions, you know, and, sure. and, and not releasing them, you know. And and I think that's very important, even if you start with, because I think what you do, um, the music and, and the working out, it's kind of like creative therapy, you know. Right, right. So, you know, 
definitely get a therapist if you feel like you can't do it on your own. Get some kind of support system, but also use the talents, the innate talents and gifts that you have within yourself and start pouring that into, just like you said, whether it's writing or music, it, it doesn't have to be one particular thing. If it is working on model cars or old fashioned cars, right. whatever it is that, that lights a spark, I think, in your soul, right. then start yeah. doing that because that is a way to pour, to pour that creativity and and um, and any struggles that you're going through into that versus projecting it outwardly onto other people. Right, and and I would say to that as well as like for me, I I learned that I'm a very, I feel like my my God given gift is self expression, mm. and I know for me when I don't express myself, it's, it they can turn ugly, mm. you know. So I have to express myself. So. For the men out there, it's like, look at your temperament, look at your personality, like who you are inside and, and see what works for you. Mm -hmm. You know, for me, I started to, I know I need to be more uh, consistent with it, but I started to do my videos um, probably back in 2018 or 19, mm -hmm. but I just would do them on Facebook, not YouTube as much, but it was like, I needed somebody to talk to. Right. And I just started talking to the camera, mm -hmm. you know, and then I was like, maybe I should post this and see what happens and help people, you know, mm -hmm. but at first it was just like me, just kind of like a, a video diary, I guess, mm -hmm. you know? So, um, but yeah, I would say to the men, just find something that, that would release you from yeah. your, your mental barriers or your, your kind of, you know, mm -hmm. in, in, inward, you know, right. so. And, and it's nothing to be ashamed of. It's nothing yeah. to be ashamed of, right? Because I think so many men, men are ashamed. Ashamed. Yeah. They feel shame when, especially if they've been diagnosed, you know, right. or yeah. even if they haven't, right? Because mm -hmm. a lot of men who struggle with depression and haven't been diagnosed or struggle with anxiety or whatever it is that they may be, or maybe even thoughts that they're not, right. you know, like, where's this coming from or anything like that, that to not be ashamed of that and to want to to really look within and to figure out, like you said, your personality, your temperance, you know, like noticing the things that agitate you, that yeah. send you off the deep end, you know, right. so to speak. Like, I think it's very important for you to really get in touch with who you are as a person, as yes. an individual in order to know, OK, and, and you don't have to be ashamed about going to get a diagnosis. At least you right, know, yeah. right? Exactly. It's better to know. Yeah. yeah. And then that way you can, you can, you know, just like Joy's doing for you, you can go and research for yourself. You may not right. have that other, you may not have that support system at, in the beginning, but I right. think it's very right. important for you to go and research it for yourself, to learn about it for yourself um, so that you can make better decisions. Do you agree with that or do? I definitely agree with that because that's one thing. And at, for me, I'm just a curious person, but that's one thing that helped me mm -hmm. when I was going through and I didn't have anybody like I was I was living with my mom at um, I came home from school in 2014. I was 26. So from 26 to 31, mm -hmm. I was staying with my mom. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times when I was going through my dark times just in that room, um, everybody would like leave to go to work mm -hmm. and I would stay at the house and I had nothing to do. Nobody to talk to nothing mm -hmm. like the community or anything to go to. So I just started reading about my diagnosis, you know, mm -hmm. and that's what really helped me understand it. But I'm still learning more and more right. each day. But uh, yeah, learning, you know, what learning about your feelings, like what am I feeling at this moment? Yeah. OK, let me let me let me Google it because you can Google almost anything. You know? <laughs> so it's like, what what am I feeling? What am I feeling at this point? Why am I feeling like mm -hmm. this? OK, let me Google it. Let me understand. Let me watch some YouTube videos and understand, you know, because um, I feel like everybody, everything's connected to something. Mm -hmm. So it's like, somebody's gonna be going through something that you've been through always, mm -hmm. you know? So it's always, always good to educate yourself. Yes, and I think that that is the key, is education. Yeah. Like, I think a lot of men expect you just to understand them. And then like, if you don't tell me, like I, you know, yes, I'm intuitive as a woman, but I also still need to know what it is, what are your struggles and for you not to be ashamed of that you right. know you, yeah. you you gotta you got to you gotta be vulnerable so to any of the men who struggle with 
vulnerability and 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 searching out their feelings and releasing those emotions what advice would you give them i would give them the most important advice and i think life lesson of all is to love yourself and try to understand yourself mm -hmm. you know because that was very hard and and at times still hard trying for myself is understanding who is Fonda White, you know, mm -hmm. who is Joe Smith, wow. who is, you know, whoever. Understanding yourself at the core of who you are mm -hmm. is the first step to any, in my opinion, success period. Yes. You know, because if you go out in the world and you're getting bombarded with all these things and all these thoughts and people's opinions and things like that, it's like, but you don't have a, a, a core system to stand on. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very hard to get swayed by, mm -hmm. you know, things. So I would say, you know, open up to yourself. Wow. You know, I'm, I, I actually made a video about that the other day about being honest with yourself first, you know, being honest with yourself first about your feelings, about uh, what you're actually going through, you know, because that's the only way you're going to heal. So understanding yourself at, at the core. Right. Oh, that is so good. Because I think, I really do think that because a lot of men experience, um, you know, shutting down that feminine energy within them because that's the feminine the the, the emotional the the nurturing the um you know the one who does all the crying and and the vulnerability right. that is the feminine energy and so many of them were you know was shunned it was it was yeah. stop crying you know yeah. well you got to be able to get that out and so a lot of men still experience you know maybe fear around yeah. that because they were uh, abused or um, spoken negatively over when they when they were having a bad day or, right. you know, having these, um, I don't like to call them negative emotions, but, right. you know, having these emotions and they're not able to tap into that or release them, you know, so I, yeah. I do think that it's very important for them to really go and, and tackle those emotions and figure out, like you said, where is this coming from? Like, where are mm -hmm. these emotions coming from? Where are these feelings coming from? You got to really get to know yourself first before you venture out and getting to know somebody else and trusting someone yeah. else. Because like you said, you got to get honest with yourself. You got to be able to trust your own feelings, your own emotions, you know, so that mm -hmm. you're not projecting that stuff outwardly. So, yeah. Um, and and I know um, I was even share this with you is like for me growing up, I grew up in a dysfunctional family household mm -hmm. and I was like sexually abused. I was mm -hmm. physically abused verbally, you know, just fighting right. guns to the head, wow. knives pointed, just a whole bunch of mess. But it's, and I know, especially for, for, for black men, it's hard to, you know, uh, cope with that, all that. Yeah. So the way I coped back then was through when I, I started doing drugs at nine, Wow, you know what I mean? And so it was like, all the things I was like, parents yelling, fighting and stuff, I would just take my, I, I started with my inhaler, my asthma inhaler, mm. and I would just puff it a lot and you, you get a buzz or whatever. Then it went from pills to drinking to other things. And I just, when I saw myself like, um, you know, I, I think I've mentioned before, like trying to end my life four times in my life, you know? So when I, when I got to a point where I needed to take, make a change, because that's, that's the biggest thing is like, you know that old saying when you get sick and tired of being yeah. sick and tired? Mm -hmm. You know, I was sick and tired of being sick and tired of being sick and tired. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So it was it's to the when you get to that point to to let yourself like just go. Like, okay, like I, I went through all this stuff. I don't know what I'm doing or how to handle it, but it gets to a point where you're you're gonna get to a point where you're gonna get tired of, of living the same mm -hmm. routine kind of life and you gotta change things up, wow. you know, and uh, as as men you know, we'll, we'll find a way, you mm -hmm. know, we'll find a way to, to, to change things up. But like I said, you know, self-love, being vulnerable and, and finding something that you actually love to do that's going to keep your mind on the prize, you mm -hmm. know, so. Absolutely. Most definitely. So um, before we go, I want you to um, just speak about the importance of self-care with, with a mental barrier and, um, you know, give some just some tips on on how they can get started, uh, how they can start implementing that into their lives. Um, right. If they are at that point, even if they're not at that point, you know, like what can they start 
doing today to care for themselves, to love themselves so that they can get into that space of, um, of really finding who they are and the core of who they are. Right. Yeah. Um, I would say if, if you're starting your day out or, or you're going through your day is for me, like it was about like, i be honest with you, like just taking a shower, mm. you know, just like self care, taking a shower, going for a walk, mm. you know, it was those little things mm -hmm. that, that helped me get to the bigger things and my bigger vision, but just start out small. You know, you don't have to have this major thing, you know, going on. If you, if you love to re read a book, you know, uh, I used to do this thing where I would just go out and, and go to Walmart, mm -hmm. you know, just, I wouldn't buy nothing, you know, mm -hmm. and have no money, but you know, I would just <laughs> go walk around, you know, just walk around and just get out, get right. the, the vitamin D on you, get the sun, you know, and if you do want to stay inside, find an activity, find something to do that kind of soothes your, your, your mental barriers and whatnot. And, um, and if, and if you're not going through something, you're just trying to find your, your, who you are, you know, I would say that, um, you know, just keep keep researching about yourself. You know, ask the questions, ask the right questions. You know, who am I? You know, what am I about? Where, where do I want to go? Uh, what am I trying to accomplish? Things like that. You know, just keep keep going. I always tell people, just keep going, you know. Keep going, right, yeah. And you inspire so much hope in, in men, especially in Black men, you know, because um, I think a lot of men can see themselves in you. It might not be the same, you know, barrier, but, you know, other men can see them themselves within you and, and know that, you know, hey, if this if this big this big athletic guy can can do it and be, and admit it, then I can, too. And so right. um, I appreciate that. I appreciate you. And let us know what, if you got anything going on. Um, how can how can people reach out to you if they need that support system, if they they want to join Rise to Strive, or if they want to learn more about your Mind Me project, let us know how you can, how we can, how they can get in contact with you. Yeah, um, well, I, you know, I have my YouTube channel, which I'm, I'm probably going to change the name, but everything mm -hmm. right now is going to be the Mind Me project, M I N D Me project, and uh, but you can find me on, especially on Facebook, just Fonda White. Um, reach out to me, message me. You know, on Instagram, it's I just changed it to to Mind Me project, but you can uh, find me on there and you know, DM me or whatnot, or even on YouTube, reach out, watch a couple of my videos or whatnot. Um, I, like I said, you know, be, being an aspiring entrepreneur now and, and trying to do all these different things, I'm really trying to hone in on focusing on one, but um, which is probably going to be the Miami project, but anywhere on those platforms, you can reach me and talk to me, open up, you know, I'm, I'm willing to open up with you. <laughs> awesome. And I definitely will put all that information in to the description box on YouTube. Um, we'll make a blast a little, I don't know if you saw the one that I did with Belinda, but I'll do a little, um, blast for when the, um, when the podcast premieres and when the YouTube video, um, I do like a little one minute clip to, you oh, know, okay. to show people that, um, where they can go. Um, but I thank you. I thank you for being yeah. here. I thank you for your transparency. I thank you for being vulnerable and showing men that it is okay to not be okay. Nobody's expecting you to be perfect. Just expecting right. you to be honest. But again, like you said before, you cannot be honest with anybody else until you are honest with yourself. And that's what it's about, being honest right. with yourself first, right? Before you are honest with anybody else. Most definitely. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. I appreciate you. Thank you so very much uh -huh. for joining me today. No problem. Thank you. All right. Have a great day. See you. Uh-huh. Bye-bye. <laughs> Let's see. So y'all, if y'all are interested in learning more about the Mind Me Project, um, you can reach Fonda White on Instagram. It is Fonda White Jr. Um, he is on Facebook as well as Fonda White Jr. Uh, his YouTube, he said, I believe it's Rise to Strive, um, but he also has an Instagram page for the Mind Me Project. So go ahead and check him out if you guys, if you are a man, a, um, and you are struggling with a, a mental barrier and you're just looking for some kind of support system, reach out to Fonda. He's been through it. Uh, this is his mission. He wants to help not only um, men, but 
more people in general to get honest with themselves, to discover themselves so that they too can live a prosperous life, even with a mental barrier. So I appreciate y'all. I thank y'all for joining me today. I want you to go out, have an awesome, amazing and beautiful day today. From my heart to yours, as always, namaste. If you experienced rejection, abandonment, trauma, or abuse as a child, you may find it difficult to create a healthy, happy, and holistic life. You are not alone. I am Coach Susie, and I am a survivor of addiction and narcissistic domestic violence abuse. I was raised by a mother who experienced narcissistic personality disorder, and I experienced every type of abuse. I was rejected, abandoned, and traumatized before the age of 10. As I grew older, I attracted these same type of relationships into my life because this was my life. It was all I knew and it was what I was accustomed to until I introduced myself to something different. In 2015, I left a 20 year unhealthy and abusive relationship with a man who struggles with narcissistic personality disorder. And I began a journey into loving myself unconditionally. It took me five years to accomplish living a happy, healthy, and holistic life. And that was primarily due to the lack of financial and educational resources for people like me who were severely traumatized as children and grew up in impoverished neighborhoods. The Loving Yourself Unconditionally movement was created from the mind of a traumatized child who struggled for years with self-doubt and low self-esteem. But I learned to love herself unconditionally beyond past abuse and thrive successfully in life with PTSD, bipolar disorder, and ADHD. I struggled to love myself unconditionally due to the mental and emotional abuse I received as a child. The voices of doubt, fear, and not good enough would constantly haunt me until I began to change my mind. The Loving Yourself Unconditionally movement is a community of people who desire to learn practical and effective ways to love themselves unconditionally beyond abuse. The Loving Yourself Unconditionally movement is not about chasing perfection and trying to be perfect. It's about learning to love yourself unconditionally in every area of your life, no matter what that looks like. It's about becoming the healthiest, happiest, and truest version of yourself, no matter what that looks like. If you are ready to learn how to love yourself unconditionally beyond abuse, Pre-register today at suzysuttles.com. Everyone has something to teach us. My question to you is, are you ready to learn?